So as I've been writing my book, Age of Context, I've really started seeing a wide variety of new sensors, not just ones that run this Google Glass or this uh, monitor on my wrist, but ones that can really affect uh, your life and study your sleep patterns and other things. And we're going to see uh, one of those sensors, uh, a company built around a sensor called Bedit, which is studying sleep and uh, what's going on in the bed. And we're going to learn about it right now. And who are you? I'm Ben. I originally started a company called Zio, which was one of the quantified self pioneers. And I've since been helping out a company called Bedit launch their product while I'm doing my own startup called Rev. Yeah, we'll talk about Rev a little bit later. Um, but tell me about, uh, well, you, you, you've been fascinated by sleep. What, what got you into this? Yeah, so I, I've been in sleep for, well, my whole life, but uh, professionally in the last- <laughs> We all sleep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> eight, eight to nine hours a day for me. Uh, but started working on it professionally eight or nine years ago when we heard that if you woke up at the right time in your sleep cycle, you felt more refreshed. And that was sort of the gateway to learn about really how important sleep quality is for your entire life. Yeah. This morning I had to wake up at four to take my son to the airport. How, how would, it, how would a, a new kind of alarm clock that would know my sleep cycle, what, would, what kind of difference would that have made? Yeah, so waking up? W it, it's fascinating because originally at Zia I, I would have pitched you and said, four hours of sleep, no problem, we'll wake you up at the right time. The reality is you can affect the way that you feel based on your sleep stage when you wake up, but it's maybe 10% of the equation. The other 90% is your sleep quality, how long you slept, your stress level. So really, you want to take a holistic approach and, uh, and approach all of those things to really feel your best. Show me the sensor and tell me what, what the sensor is and where you would put it in your bed and tell me about this. Sure, sensor. sure. Sensor. So Bedit, uh, their innovation is creating a sensor that doesn't touch your body to measure sleep quality. And so this sensor um, is a, it's a peel and stick and gets placed uh, right on your bed under your sheets. You so can, directly on the mattress. Directly on the mattress. You can you put your you know your your sheets on top of it. You can put a mattress topper on top of it, and then when you lie in bed, you don't feel it, right? So unlike uh, a Fitbit or a Zio um, or sort of those types of last generation devices, this actually requires it doesn't require you to interact with it every day in order to collect really high quality data. All right, and so this is underneath uh, on my mattress. How do I charge it? First of all, there's a battery in here, I assume? Yeah, so it's actually uh, plugs into the wall. So um, this sensor module is the electronics, the sensor's here, and then that just gets powered nonstop by a wall wart. And then this is Bluetooth to your phone, and that's actually where you interact with the data there and on the web, and it shows you your sleep quality, what you can do about it, and it's actually quite a sophisticated sensor given that you don't have to wear anything on your body. What is this sensor sensing? What yeah. is it, you know, like this sensor sensing my movement, right? Yeah. What is this one? So the, the real innovation here is that this is such a sensitive detector of motion that because it's placed under your chest uh, as you're asleep, so this goes sort of under that area of your body, you can so sensitively detect motion that you can get heart rate and respiration in addition to motion. So whereas something on the, on the wrist that just measures motion um, will only get really gross, wake up, fall asleep, this can actually determine REM sleep, deep sleep, sleep quality over the course of the night um, in a similar way that you'd get using a headband but without having to put a headband on the body. Can you, can you see sleep disorders like sleep apnea through this kind of sensor? You, you'd get some information about the quality of respiration, but since it's not a medical device and there's a lot more that goes into really diagnosing sleep apnea, uh, you'd be sort of seeing a doctor to actually diagnose sleep apnea rather than but doing could it, it with this device. But could it tell you that you're a candidate to have yeah. that conversation? Just like if you doctor? step on a scale at home and it, and it says like, you weigh, oh my God, pounds. And you know, that you know, could indicate diabetes, obesity, all these things. Yeah, it can be an early warning sign, right? If your sleep quality is low, then Beta definitely recommends you go see a doctor and, and can be a tip off towards really getting diagnosed. So let's talk about the data. So is this your data that we're seeing on this Yeah, here? so this is actually the, uh, one of the co-founders of Bedit, um, a guy in Finland, uh, Miko. Okay. And uh, this is a night of sleep where he slept 10 and a half hours. And you can see that um, over the beginning of the night, he had periods of deep sleep, which is very classic. 
some nice REM blocks towards the end of the night. And you can see um, both the structure of the sleep stage, which is sort of the outcome that you care about, but also how bad it is determining this information, both based on movement and heart rate. Okay. So, and you could, uh, you could uh, match that up with another sensor. Like I, I have a basis watch that I usually mm -hmm. wear or this watch. It, yeah. That'll tell your day and it tell you some other things. How much does this cost? So this is currently 99 right now on Indiegogo. They're running a crowdfunding campaign. For the next it'll, few weeks. For the next few weeks, and it'll be uh, 149 once it's on the market. Okay. And there, there are actually other sensors, a few sensors that are integrated into the Bedit. So an ambient noise sensor and a light sensor that'll show you how the light in your room is impacting your sleep quality and how the ambient noise level. So if there's a garbage truck going by every hour, you'd see that reflected not only on the noise level, but also you'd see a disturbance in your sleep. Wow, so there's a few sensors in here that Correct. do things. Heart rate I saw on there too. This is so sensitive it can hear my heart rate. Yeah, so that's really the innovation that allows you to get sleep stage from just motion. It's so sensitive that when you're still, which while you're sleeping, you mostly are still, it can actually determine heart rate. And using that, you can see how heart rate varies over time over the course of the night, and that correlates very strongly with sleep stage. So you can determine some level of REM sleep, deep sleep, which is the sleep quality that really helps you get rested. So I assume you can tell I'm having sex on this sensor? You would see a lot of motion. <laughs> You'd see a lot of motion for, you know, a dog in the bed or sex. Um, certainly possible to dive, dive deeper than that. But, okay. uh, but that gets you, I have a, a chapter in the book, uh, well, I have, we cover, uh, I call it over the freaky line. because. Yeah. You know, to put a sensor on you and start letting the world study you, you have to trust that uh, that won't be used against you. Yeah. Right? Um, so how, what's the privacy like on this? Yeah, so, so one of the barriers in the entire quantified self space is gonna be privacy and data use. And you know, certainly at Zia, we tried to pioneer a data use model that really put the control in the hands of the consumer in terms of what happens to their data, where they move it, what it can be used for. Uh, Bedit and other companies have followed that tradition, which we feel is very strongly is important. Yeah. Right? This data is very personal to you. Right? It's more personal than what's collected on your phone, and as such, it has to be treated very carefully, uh, except for the NSA back end, of course. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> that's a whole other The Finnish hour. company, so they might actually get away with that one without That's it. a whole other <laughs> argument. Um, is there a way to block it or turn it off and say, don't collect data tonight? or? Uh, you know, it, yeah, I mean, it's it's easy to unplug, right? You okay. just literally. So it just has to be plug. plugged in the wall. To has to be plugged in the wall in the wall to operate. Okay, well that's easy. Um, yeah. Where do you think the uh, where do you think this is going? Yeah. I, you know, because it, you know, we're soon going to have twenty sensors yeah. on us that are set studying us as we walk yeah. around. I mean, I have five here and one or two here and seven on my phone already. Yep. Right, and I'm hearing about shoes that are gonna have sensors in them, and other yep. clothing that's gonna have sensors. Where do you see this world going? Yeah, the, the early quantified self devices were very, you had to be very active about them, right? Put on the Fitbit, put on the Zio. And as a result, you didn't get as much data because eventually you forgot or you stopped deciding to wear it. And you didn't get multiple sources of data. So having finding someone that had their sleep data, their activity data, their blood data all together was very rare. And as a result, you couldn't do much with it, right, outside of a specific vertical. Where we're going first is that the data streams are gonna be passive and everywhere, right? You're gonna get your sleep data from your bed. You're gonna get, you know, data about eye movements from Google Glass. You're gonna get location data from your phone. And at some point, we're gonna hit a tipping point where there's enough data that the algorithms on, on the back end can really intelligently determine how to alert you and how to, to make you move towards either greater health, greater financial security, whatever it is, right? And, yeah. you know, the, so the Zio model was you put this on, you look at it every day, you know, bet it can move towards, you know, you haven't looked at your sleep in three months, but you know what? We noticed your deep sleep was lower and we've tied that into your Fitbit data or your phone data or, you know, the eye device that, you know, is going to go on your wrist someday. And we've noticed that as you stop running, your sleep quality has gone down, right? That's the level of analytics that we're leading towards, which is really going to proactively help us live a healthier life. Wow. Now, this works with a certain kind of person, you know, uh, and the quantified self movement has them. There are people who want to know everything about what yeah. they've done. How do you get the average 
everyday Joe who isn't a quantified yeah. self person to put this thing on their bed and, and start getting into this world. Yeah, so we think it's essentially two pieces. One, you have to make the data collection super easy, right? Both in terms of cost and convenience, right? So strapping things on your body, running around with them, paying lots of money for them, paying attention to them is not a mass market behavior. So really make the data easy, easy, easy to collect. And then second, make the data more actionable. So, you know, the athlete is willing to like dive into the data and see how heart rate uh, variability during exercise relates to sleep quality, relates to something else. As a consumer, you just need an answer. Like yeah. in order to be less stressed today, take five deep breaths now. In order to have great time at your meeting tomorrow, go to bed now, don't have any more caffeine for the day. And that simple advice can be generated when you have enough data. So we talked about Bet It. You can get it on Indiegogo for a couple of weeks for uh, ninety nine dollars. What are what's your company? Because you're just an evangelist for them yeah. and, and an advisor. What's your what's your new company? Yeah. About? So we started a new company called Rev, and the innovation behind Rev is that we noticed that when we personally changed behavior, and when many people change behavior, they are turning to an expert, an expert in you know their preferred lifestyle, an expert in personal finance, an expert in nutrition, and that expert drastically motivates them. Yeah. But that's usually through really static content, like a book or a video. And those experts- yeah, People like Tim Ferriss, or you, you give me a whole list of them. Yeah. Right, Oprah, Deepak Chopra, Tim Ferriss, Dave Asprey, you name it, there's a lot of content that is really valuable in terms of information and building your conviction. What that content can't really do is help you follow through. And you know, I've for years been picking up those tools by myself and tying these two together and saying, here's the expert and what they're saying. I'm going to tie it together with this group of tools that help me track and use it over time. What we're doing at Rev is creating a platform that enables experts to deliver their content over a mobile device and th with all of these sensors and behavioral psychology that really helps it be effective. So are you going to be the guy who, when I go into the Krispy Kreme, you, you Tim Ferriss is going to show up on my Google Glass and go, hey, let's uh, stop and think about what you're about to do. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. I'm waiting for the day when we can get image recognition on Google Glass and tie that into behavioral programs so that when you see your wife, it says, you've been working on really being grateful. Why not you know, tell your wife that she looks beautiful today? Or when you see the Krispy Kreme donut, like, there's a shock that prevents you from it making an immediate decision. We think that as sensors and algorithms become smarter and smarter that the expert is going to play a really strong role and if we give the expert access to those tools they can really help you change wow it's a fun world uh, you're not that's that company's in stealth mode or, or yeah so we're sort of in pilots we've done a couple of really successful pilots with a few great content producers but it's not public yet okay. uh, so right now just uh, working hard and getting things ready cool we'll, we'll watch that where do we watch uh, your company evolve What's so rev uh, is at rev.me r-e-v-v.me -V -V yeah. and then bet it is at getbetit.com and of course there's an indiegogo campaign running right now very cool how is your company funded and uh, Tell me about your company, how you're yeah. doing it. Yeah, so so far, we, we started this company, just myself and a co-founder, and self-funded it so far, um, with the really a broad perspective that behavior change needed to be easier, yeah. and did a ton of customer development to come to where we've been today to really start working with these experts. So over the next few months, we'll be making some hires, bringing on some financing in order to really build it out. Uh, the nice thing about a business that is going to generate revenue you know, from the first day we launch a program, we already have some revenue, is that we're not going to le need a lot of financing. Right? A company like Zio required tens of millions of you know, VC dollars, and we think we can do it on a lot less, which is going to be great for the founders. Very cool. Thank you so much for yeah. coming out, and uh, good luck with these Thank two you. companies.